Hello, Augies Worldwide. I am prepared. I have a box and a box cutter. This arrived in the mail a couple days ago. It's from Bridgecom Systems, so I know what it is. It's got to be a new radio. For years, they've been selling uh, one handheld and one mobile radio. So let's see what we got here. It's got to be another handheld. It's too small for mobile. So we'll see what we've got. And by the way, this is interesting. They sent it to me with no warning. So it just showed up in the email. Oh, God, I hate peanuts. Oh, how could anybody do that? Do you know what those peanuts have in common with mosquitoes? They're both the bane of mankind. So anyway... I know Amazon doesn't like them, and they don't like anything shipped to them that's got anything that resembles a peanut. But I guess people still use them, so they still make them. So I'm going to have to get a little bit more dramatic with this box to get this out. There we go. And in the box we find another box. And this one is from Anytone, and it is a model ATD168UV. It covers 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 480 megahertz. And this has, well, it's got two different battery sizes checked right here. It's got an FCC ID, and we're going to check that FCC ID to make sure it's real. Okay. I always do that with these. Chinese radios because you just never know. Now, important, not part 90 approved. That's strange. Okay, this may be because it's a prototype. Now, this is a digital DMR and analog, so you can use it as a standard FM radio or you can use it as a DMR radio. Um, there are three major types of digital modes in the United States. One is a D-Star, which is used by Kenwood and ICOM. And then there's Yesu System Fusion, used by Yesu. And then there's DMR. DMR is a third protocol. And, well, the Chinese don't like the Japanese, and Japanese don't like the Chinese. So, because of that, the Chinese have got to do something different, and so they use DMR. Now, DMR has a lot of advantages, disadvantages. Some people swear by one, people swear by another. Let me tell you what you need to get if you're going to get a digital radio. Get one that is the most used in the area where you live. Some cities or whatever will be mostly DMR or mostly system fusion or mostly D-Star, okay? Get what the other people around you have. Now, you can log into what are called, in some senses, rooms, where it's like a big network. Everybody who comes in can hear everybody else, okay? There are some of these rooms set up that will cross-connect between D-Star and Fusion, etc., like that. So that makes things a little better. There is absolutely no evidence that any of these manufacturers are going to do that by themselves. So let's take a look. Let's see what we've got in the box. Okay, this is the Anytone radio right here. That's the brand that Bridgecom System sells. Okay, and we're looking at an FCC ID. Let's just do this right now. Let's check that FCC ID. Okay, the grantee code, in this case, is the first three characters, which are T4K. So, T4K. And then the product code is the remaining numbers here, which is D168UV, D168UV. Exact match. Okay, start search. There we go. Nothing. So as of right now, and I'm assuming this must be prototype, it is not registered with the FCC yet. So I'm a little surprised that any tone has gone with T4K, which is the three-digit code. Usually in the past, they've been a five-digit code. 
Okay, the D168UV is the model number. Okay, well, let's just keep on going on down in here. And this is the charging cord. Note, most things in ham radio these days are starting to do this. USB-A, USB-C, okay, 5 volts. You aren't plugging 12 volts into this anywhere. You're plugging 5 volts into it. You're seeing that more and more and more in ham radio. Here is a charging stand for it. You can plug the USB-C into here. Now note that this provides an output of 8.4 volts at 1 amp. Now what the 8.4 volts does is charge the lithium ion battery. It's a couple cells in series. And you just apply the correct voltage and there's a battery management system here somewhere that will do that too. Now here, the antenna. This is a nice long antenna. It's more helpful than the rubber duck. We have a female here, the male, the male has the pin in it, and the female screws into the plug. There we go. We have a little clip, belt clip. This is to plug into a US outlet, and it has a USB-A on that, okay? And there are some text over here that says that this will give you two amps at five volts. Okay, here is a short antenna, more rubber duckish. Okay, and then here are two batteries, two batteries. These are nice. So you have a smaller battery and a bigger battery. So you can always go out and have two batteries with you. Let's just take the big one and plug it in. Guys, it's a little hard. There we go. Okay. Now you've got two knobs up here. You've got two extra buttons on the side. These are going to be for a bunch of different features. When you see this red and green on here, that means for sure that you're looking at a DMR radio, or at least a digital radio. Let's turn this on. Let's see if there's, okay, booting, please wait. Any tone. Okay, here on VFOA is a digital on 446. Boy, that doesn't stay on very long. Okay, we're going to change that like right now. We're going to select settings, radio set, and we're going to set that. Display, uh, here's display functions. Uh, night mode, light time, five seconds. Yeah, baloney, about 25 seconds. Okay, so now this will stay on a little bit more while you're fiddling with it. Okay, back, back 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 and on to here now if we turn this we see that it's a VFO it's in digital what I want to do is get this on a non-digital frequency and log channel one okay let's try it Hey, this is my tiny spectrum analyzer and what I want to see is how clean the spectrum is coming out of this thing okay now let's transmit okay there we go 500 megahertz is way up above any of the harmonics okay this goes up to 3 gig. So this is a very good result. I'm impressed with this radio. This is one of the finer HF radios. Now let's put in a different fre frequency. 
Okay, all our analogs are in. Here we go, 144525. Okay. Let's transmit on this. It takes a while for this to settle. Okay, this is not as spectacular, but what we are looking at is 10 dB per division. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 dB down for the second harmonic and a little bit less than that down for the first harmonic. Okay, this is excellent, actually. This is excellent. All right, so okay, the owner's manual covers everything in detail, the everything out through the whole manual is in English, okay? And it tells you about everything. You're going to need to spend a little time with the manual, just as I did. We've got two antennas. The short one for, you know, being around a ham gathering. The longer one if you want to hit a repeater. This is 19 inches, uh, which is a quarter wavelength on the frequency here. Let's just look and see if there's a list of features. I'm surprised. Usually these manuals start out with a list of the wonderful things that they do. Okay. But I will tell you from having had previous experience with any tone radios, they're excellent. And there's something else that's very important that I want to tell you about any tone radios. You can buy any tone radios just about anywhere. You get an any tone radio. But if you want support, You've got to go to Bridgecom Systems. Bridgecom Systems also offers training. They have something called DMR University, which you get if you purchase a radio from them. If you buy a uh, radio, an Anytone radio from any other source, you're kind of on your own, but you can pick up off of uh, YouTube or, or whatnot. But Bridgecom Systems is really fully committed to the Anytone brand. And you can get from them a mobile radio, a handheld, and now a new handheld. Now this handheld, it came with a little sticker right here. Warning part, not part 90 approved. I think what this means is warning not yet part 90 approved. Because we looked up what they hope will be the FCC. ID in the back, it's not yet in the FCC system. So I think I'm dealing with a prototype. In future videos, we'll try the thing on the air, see what it sounds like, and so on. Okay? So, there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel, go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Another thing you can do is either a super comment or a super chat or, let's see, become a member. Now, we're going to start very soon here putting out all the new videos early for the members, the members on Patreon, members on PayPal, and so on, so they can see them early. So, then, of course, you can watch it for free, just waiting a little bit. Uh, I encourage you to support the channel. Thank you so much for your time, and until we next meet, 73.